Welcome biologists. Today we are going to be looking at specification point C taken from the OCR specification for A-level biology on respiration 5.2.2 and we're going to be looking at the stage of glycolysis. There's a lot of information here that we need to be aware of. I'm going to break this down a bit further for you to explain what the mark scheme wants you to know about this part of respiration. So these are the overall parts in respiration. We have two routes, anaerobic and aerobic. And the first, the next couple of videos are going to be focusing on this stage here, the aerobic respiration. And the, as you can see here, glycolysis starts off both the anaerobic and aerobic processes. So glycolysis, the main thing we need to know here is that it occurs within the cytoplasm of the cell. So not actually in the mitochondria at all. It's in the cytoplasm of the cell. And it involves splitting a one six carbon molecule of glucose into two molecules of pyruvate, which are then actively transported into the mitochondria and used for the next part, which is the link reaction in aerobic respiration. So um, we need to know some terms involved here to, in glycolysis, which is which are very popular throughout the whole of the respiration topic, to be honest. So phosphorylation, um, this is where uh, I have an addition of a phosphate group from a, from a mo to a molecule. Now, this phosphate group usually comes from ATP, but not always. We have substrate level phosphorylation, and this is the formation or production or synthesis of ATP without the use of an electron transport chain. We have lysis, similar to hydrolysis, really. This is the splitting or breaking down of a molecule. And dehydrogenation, D is removal, hydrogenation, hydrogen the removal of hydrogen from a molecule, also known as oxidation, if you think of the oil rig. So this is uh, what is happening within glycolysis. I'm going to talk about how this happens. So the first thing to note here is I've got glucose, and this is changing into hexose biphosphate. And it does this by using two lots of ATP. So what happens here is one of the phosphate groups from ATP, adenosine di triphosphate, um, one of these is going to be removed from the ATP to form ADP. And this inorganic phosphate that's removed is going to be added onto my glucose to form hexose biphosphate. So by my glucose gaining a phosphate group, it has become phosphorylated or phosphorylation has occurred. My hexose biphosphate then turns into two lots of triose phosphate. And the key thing here to look at and remember here is that I've got a six carbon compound here for my hexose biphosphate. And my six carbon compound has been broken down into two lots of three carbon compounds. So this has happened through lysis or hydrolysis, lysis. Um, my two lots of triose phosphate are then changed into two lots of triose biphosphate, again, through phosphorylation. However, this bit here does not use ATP. It just uses um, inorganic phosphates that are present within the cytoplasm of the cell. The next thing that happens is my two lots of triose biphosphate will then change into two lots of pyruvate by several different things going on here. So I have NAD, which is a coenzyme, and my NAD will become reduced NAD, and it will do this by dehydrogenation. So it's taken away a hydrogen from my triose biphosphate, and my hydrogen has reduced my NAD, which is why it's now called reduced NAD, and my triose biphosphate has become dehydrogenated or oxidized as it's had its hydrogen removed a hydrogen removed. This reduced NAD will then be used at a later point within um, the respiration process. Um, however, for now, the next thing we need to know here is that I also have ATP that has been formed as a product of this reaction. So therefore, I have substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, so the overall yield per one molecule of glucose, I've got four molecules of ATP that have been made, but because two have been used, the net yield of ATP is two. If you need to go back and look at that diagram as well, again. I've got two molecules of NADH2 or reduced NAD. Don't forget two molecules per one molecule of glucose. I've also got two molecules of pyruvate and these they use later on within the reaction for, photo, for respiration. Okay, so there we are. That's a summary of the process. And there we have our specification point again. So remember in your exams, don't use those words size, it, they, or amount. And good.